Hello, let's continue to look at how the OS manages memory by talking about virtual memory, which when we're saying memory, we're really referring to RAM. It's our main memory component, one we use most often, and its key purpose is to hold all open programs and files. Now, to be pedantic, a program is a file, but I'm differentiating between something like PowerPoint, which is a program, a set of instructions, and then what I mean by file is something like this PPTX file, which is not instructions, but it would be used by the PowerPoint program. So that's me trying to differentiate between instructions and data, essentially. But anything I have open on my computer is held in RAM, including things like the operating system itself, or at least part of the operating system currently being used. Now let's pretend this very simplistic diagram is representing the fact that RAM is now full. It's now reached its maximum capacity, which is a problem if I want to try and open another program. I double click on Microsoft Word, I want to use it, but RAM is full. So what could potentially happen when it reaches this maximum capacity? Well, it might not let me open any more programs. It might say to me, actually, you're low on memory, you can't open Microsoft Word. And so I couldn't use Microsoft Word. Potentially also, things would start crashing. This is especially true if a program already running is re requiring more memory space to be able to work. So for example, a video game, you might be exploring a map and it might be loading in more data as you walk around this map. But if RAM is full, then it might just crash if it cannot load in more data that it needs. So it's not good. It's not a good thing if RAM reaches its full capacity and we want to keep using it. But there is a workaround because the alternative to these two not so good outcomes is we can use virtual memory and we can avoid these two things happening. Now, virtual memory is a procedure which the OS will manage and it effectively enables us to increase the capacity of memory, but it's not physical memory we are able to increase. I, I, I've paid for, I don't know, eight gigabytes of RAM. I can't just magically increase that capacity, but I can increase the capacity of logical memory so that it behaves as if it is bigger than eight gigabytes. So like I say, this is done by the OS and the two situations where this could happen is we're reaching or we are at full capacity. We're trying to open something new or something currently open requires more memory space. Well, what happens with virtual memory? Well, first of all, an item that hasn't been used recently is moved from RAM to secondary storage. The OS picks something in RAM to move to secondary storage. I've used the word item, quite a vague word, because it will either be a page or it will be a segment. What this will do is free up some space. It frees up a gap in RAM for another item, either this new program or file or just an extension of the capacity. We use secondary storage effectively as an overflow. We move stuff into secondary storage to enable there to be gaps in RAM. Let's look at this with some pictures. So our two key components here are RAM and secondary storage, and the OS software is what is managing this whole process. Sadly, RAM has become more complex in the last video because we talked about both physical RAM and logical RAM. Virtual memory is extending our logical RAM, is not extending our physical because it can't work miracles, it can't actually extend it. We're just pretending like RAM is a bit bigger. Now, virtual memory works best with paging, so we're going to start by showing this working with paging before we come on to segmentation. So let's imagine our scenario is our physical memory is chock-a-block, it's full. I've basically reached my full capacity. Let's imagine this is full, despite this little bit poking out at the bottom, I've reached my full capacity. So I've got no more space to put in any other programs. If we were to visualize the logical memory, this might look a little bit different because the non-contiguous nature of my physical RAM wouldn't be reflected in how the program sees itself in RAM. From the perspective of program A, it thinks it's in one block in memory, when in reality it's not. And really program A wouldn't be able to see any of these other programs or files. I'm just showing this as contiguous blocks, which we know isn't always quite true with paging. But long story short, both of these are full. I've got no more capacity. So therefore, in preparation for this moment, virtual memory will be already set up by the OS. So usually there is a file, sometimes called a page file in secondary storage, which is used by the OS to put items if needed. It will be relatively small. If we're using paging, it will be a set of pages which are empty, ready for items to get moved into. And 
The OS can grow and shrink this virtual memory as it needs to, but it will have it ready to go if needed. Now, both logical memory and virtual memory are both heavily abstracted. They're different to the actual physical realities. Therefore, we need to have translation to look up the correct physical address. Now, this page table only reflects program A. We could extend it for program B, C, and the two files. So right now we can see program A thinks it's in a contiguous block. It thinks it's at location zero, one, and two, but in reality it's at two, five, and six because it's split up on a physical memory. And we can watch what happens to this page table as we start to use virtual memory. So program D wants to join for party. It wants to run, it wants to be opened. Right now I'm picturing it being just one page, whereas in reality it would be potentially thousands if not millions, if it was really big, but let's pretend it's one just for now. I've got an issue. I've got no more space in my RAM to, to hold it. And if I want to run program D, it needs to be in RAM. I cannot access anything for, as far as the CPU is concerned from secondary storage. So it has to be in RAM to be executed. So what does the OS do? Well, the OS is going to have to move a page out of physical memory and put it in virtual memory. And it will typically pick one which hasn't been used in a long time. So let's pretend this first page of program A hasn't been used in a while. Therefore, the OS decides to move it into virtual memory. And that involves copying, or not really copying, but moving this page into secondary storage. So it's now being written in secondary storage under virtual location 95. So therefore, my page table has to be updated so that what logically appears to be at location zero is actually now at location 95, which the OS will know is in secondary storage. And what that does is leave a space open for program D to be moved into. And in reality, it will be moved from secondary storage because that's where it will be sitting when it's waiting to be opened. So right now it's in our physical memory. It will also effectively appear in our logical memory. So program D, as far as it's concerned, is, is just in RAM. And as far as program A is concerned, it's still in RAM. It doesn't know that it's in secondary storage. And the user would have no real idea if this has happened either. And this isn't a full page table, but if we were to add in program D to the page table, what is appearing to be at location 11 logically is actually at location two physically. So again, we have this translation between logical and physical. Let's jump ahead a little bit to the future where we have added file C into our RAM. It's got three pages. And so therefore I've had to move across three pages, three other pages from physical RAM to make space for file C. Now it'd have to do this one at a time. It can't just do three in, three out. It would have to first of all have moved this first file A page from RAM into virtual memory. Then it would move across the first file C page. Then it would do the same with the second file A page. The second file C page comes in. It's always one at a time. It never is doing it in chunks. But I'm showing you this setup now because I want to show you what happens if we need to access something in virtual memory. Now, the CPU is not able to access anything in virtual memory. So if program A needs to be used again, it's going to have to move this first program A page back into physical RAM so that it can be used. In order to move this first program A page back, it's going to have to move a page from physical memory into virtual memory. So let's say it's program D that hasn't been used in a long time. So therefore it feels that's most suitable to move into virtual memory. That frees up a space to then move back program A into physical RAM. And we have to update our page table to make sure we're pointing towards the correct addresses. So now this program A page is in RAM. I'm able to execute it and continue. So we often have swapping back and forth. We need to have stuff in physical RAM so that it can be executed. That will involve swapping to make space for it. Now to evaluate virtual memory, the main benefit is we are able to extend the capacity of RAM or at least seem like it is extended, meaning programs won't crash, meaning that I'm able to open more programs if I need to. However, this is not a perfect setup. The key issue with virtual memory is accessing anything which is in virtual memory is slower, mostly because secondary storage is significantly slower than RAM. To read and write anything in secondary storage, even if it's an SSD, is a lot slower than RAM. But there's also this overhead in this process. The OS is having to manage this process. It's having to translate addresses between physical memory and logical memory. It's having to keep track of the addresses in secondary storage. And it's also got to take a bit of time to decide which page to move. And it won't always be literally the one which hasn't been used re most recently. 
it will be some decision to try and make it most efficient. That takes a bit of time. So again, this slows it down. And this whole plan is predicated on there being enough capacity in secondary storage, which there won't always be. There needs to be a few gigabytes potentially spare in secondary storage to allow this to happen, which won't always be the case. If that's at near capacity, we can't really use virtual memory at all. It would crash. It would not allow you to open anything else. And the example I showed you at the end where we sort of swapped program A's page and program D's page, that could happen again and again and again and again, where we are constantly swapping stuff in and out of virtual memory. That is called freshing. Freshing is really poor for performance because secondary storage is so slow. This happens when RAM is insufficient, essentially. You're trying to do tasks which require a lot more physical RAM than you actually have. And it leads to there being a lot of freshing because the OS is trying really hard to extend your RAM. In reality, there just isn't enough. So it constantly is reading and writing from secondary storage, which slows you down massively. And the computers can become almost unusable when it starts to fresh because it's just so much slower than RAM. Now, just to end by talking about segmentation, paging is used most often for virtual memory, but both can use it. I don't want you to think that segmentation can't utilize virtual memory because it can. It's just a bit less suitable, mostly because of external fragmentation, which is the main weakness of segmentation. And it's a lot more prevalent when we have virtual memory and it causes more issues when we are swapping things in and out. Because let's just keep a, a slightly simpler example here just to demonstrate this. So let's ignore logical RAM and let's ignore the segment table just to keep things nice and simple. Well, let's say this is my current setup. RAM is completely full. I've got my segments here for program B and program A. I've got no more capacity in physical RAM. And maybe I've had to already in this process move something into virtual memory. So let's say we've already got something there, which is some subroutines for program B. And let's say maybe the main program of program B is calling a subroutine in this segment. Well, that means I need to move this segment back into physical RAM so the CPU is able to execute that subroutine. What do I do? Well, same process with paging, except with segments. I move a segment across into virtual memory, ideally one which hasn't been used in a while. That could be the other subroutines segment that goes into virtual memory and I can move subroutines in program B back into physical RAM, which is okay. It means I can run it. It works all right. The concept is still sound. The issue is it just creates external fragmentation because the segments are almost always different sizes. So it's never a one in one out. We have now created a gap in physical RAM. So in order to move a segment back into physical RAM, something else needs to get copied to virtual memory, which is the same size, if not bigger. I couldn't have, if we go back a bit, I couldn't have copied, I don't know, the data from program B into virtual memory because this subroutine segment is a little bit bigger than the data for program B. So I've got fewer choices for what to move into virtual memory. And if it happens to be bigger than what I'm moving back, it leaves me with gaps. And the gaps are what we describe as external fragmentation. It's an inefficient use of memory space because right now memory is effectively full despite some of it not being used. And if I wanted to move these subroutines for program A back into the physical RAM, well, it's a bit tricky. I need to potentially move multiple segments. I might need to extend my virtual memory, which uses up more secondary storage capacity. In order to make space for this quite large segment, I can now move it back. It now creates quite a lot more fragmentation. Again, not very efficient. So we can use segmentation. It's just paging tends to work a lot better. If you're describing virtual memory, I would suggest you describe it using pages because that's what's used most often.